Hello, Australia. Well, it is Sunday, the 19th of March, 2020. And as you can see, my flag is upside down. This is the international signal of a nation in distress. And there are those amongst us who will say, Tim, you're flying the wrong flag. You should have the red ensign. I understand all that. But this is the internationally recognized flag amongst nations of the nation of Australia. And I want, if this video is fortunate enough to travel anywhere, I would like every nation in the world to understand that this nation, the great nation of Australia, is in great peril and in great distress. And I want every Australian to also understand that you are at great peril. I now want to do a, a small PowerPoint presentation for you. I hope you enjoy it. I sincerely hope you learn from it. And I hope that we can come out of this better than when we went into it. Let me get rid of that. All right. This is from me. You see, I was born out of a Irish bloodline and my ancestor, Michael DeWire, was the great Whitlow chief of Southern Ireland. And uh, he fought oppression. And unlike him, I've never been able to stomach oppression, bullying, or just plain wrongdoing. So I say here, I will never bow to any tyrant, nor will I stay silent in times of oppression. Only in death will I be seen to bow and fall silent. Let me explain to you where this came from. My granddaughter came to me and I had, had some questions for me. And I had to explain to her firstly the freedom of speech. And this is about partly the freedom of speech. There are those among us that hate our right to free speech. They will do, they will at every opportunity use whatever means possible to stifle the concepts of freedom and will use fear, intimidation and every force to silence those who speak in favour of freedom over tyranny. And if you have no freedom of speech and if you have no freedom of thought, lose these and all is lost. So my granddaughter had a question for me. Pop, are we all going to die? My granddaughter is 12 years of age. I looked into her eyes and she had tears rolling down her cheeks and she asked me this question, are we all going to die? And I asked her why she would ask that question and she said, Every time you go to the supermarket, there's less and less food. Every time you switch on the television, there's a politician or a news program saying that there's a virus and it's going to kill millions of us. Pop, are we just going to die? I said, no, 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 darling. She, and then she cut me off and she said, well, it wasn't that long ago that that girl from Europe said the world was going to die and we were all perished because it was, everything's dying. She said, what hope do I have? What hope? Why would, why would a 12 year old girl living in one of the greatest nations ever known to the planet earth, ask her grandfather, what hope do I have? Ladies and gentlemen, that got me mad. In actual fact, that just got me pissed off. I comforted her and I assured her that I would never let anything ever hurt her. Tyranny is right at your front door and my front door. And we've been lied to on a scale that is so hard to comprehend. It is, the lie is so big. This nation is in great peril from a domestic 
terror organization. And I'm going to identify them and call them out. This video might get taken down a few times. I sincerely hope there's enough people out there that'll just keep putting it back up again. What is the exact definition of terrorism? You see, by me putting this video out, chances are they're gonna label me a domestic terrorist. But let's have a look and define the concept of terrorism. The use of violence and threats to intimidate or coerce especially for political purposes. I have no political office. I am, I'm just me. The state of fear and submission produced by terrorism or terrorization, a terroristic method of governing. The prime minister, the state premiers stand in front of cameras and they got all these nodding heads behind them telling us that COVID-19 is going to kill millions. We have to shut everything down, but I'll come to that in a minute. They terrorized the population. The media went into a, they were like a bunch of sharks around a bleeding carcass. The media went into overdrive and their verbiage was and is disturbing to say but the least. And when you can bring, when I hope the media and the politicians are so proud of themselves because I'm damn sure my granddaughter's not the only one. Children around this nation must be quietly suffering and going, do I have any hope whatsoever? Terrorism, despotism, absolutism, absolute power, autocratic dictatorships undemocratic rule, undemocratic rule. We're gonna to come to that, I can tell you, a reign of terror, totalitarianism, right? Oppression of justice, a state under a cruel and oppressive government, cruel, unreasonable, or arbitrary use of power and control. We have the military on our bloody borders within this country. All of this is the opposite to democracy and freedom and liberty. Do you have much liberty at the moment? Do you feel very free? You can't walk on the beach. You can't row on the river. You can't go on your boat. You can't go. How much liberty and freedom do you feel that you have right now? And who took it from you? Who? Fear is a weapon. You can ask Adolf Hitler, Mussolini, they know how to use fear. They used fear to kill millions of people. They went to wars. They killed millions. And fear is the weapon. Kim Jong-il, fear is his weapon. The IRA were masters. And many, many others know how effective it can be on a peaceful population, and particularly a disarmed population. And here in Australia, we can thank Johnny Howard for orchestrating that little program down in Tasmania. Disarm the population. COVID-19 could, you know, millions could die. All hotels closed, restaurants closed, churches closed. Where the heck is the minister's guts? They fell to their knees to bow to a different master than the one who hung on the cross. What, God has no power to protect? God has no power to heal. Minister, have you read your book? Oh, don't spread the disease. Industries closed down. Social distancing. Don't shake my hand. Don't hug me. Mass unemployment worldwide. Stay at home. Don't travel. You're not allowed out of your house except for this, this, and this. That sounds like Russia to me. That sounds like North Korea to me. That sounds like communist red China, to me, and hundreds of billions of dollars handed out just like that, Scott Morrison. You people in Canberra, you had no money for the drought affected farmers. Not a penny, or you'd give them a loan. Not a penny would you give. The bushfires went through. Not a penny. Not a bloody penny. It wiped out 
families and industries, the droughts just destroyed this country and you had not a penny. Somebody wobbles around with a bug and says, oh, look at this, it's gonna happen. And all of a sudden you've got billions of dollars. Ooh, fair dinkum. The entire civilian population of this nation is under house arrest. Under house arrest. The state police are out of control. They're fining people for all sorts of dumb crap. Go for a walk down the park and sit down because you're a bit weary. No, you're not allowed to do that. There's a thousand dollar fine. Come on. I think, I'm not sure, but part of the police indoctrination must have to be a psychological evaluation. Maybe they just look for narcissists today. I don't know. The military are on our state borders. This is Australia. So therefore, with the military on the borders, that in itself, by action, is a declaration of war. The Australian government, the states have declared war on a civilian population. Check the articles of war, you'll soon see. Yeah, you see, the footy's not on, the cricket's not on, all you got on is cooking shows and you know how to cook a chook anyway. Why don't you do a bit of research for yourself? Look this stuff up. You got nothing better to do, look it up. Has the Australian government corporation declared war on the people of Australia based on their actions? It would seem so. And yes, it is the Australian government corporation. We'll come to that in a little bit. It would seem so. If you are not at war, then you are free. Just some quick numbers here. Let's have a look at this. What really is going on? To date, more than 391,000 tests have been conducted nationally. Of those tests conducted for COVID-19, 1.7% have been positive. That doesn't mean they're sick. That doesn't mean they're dying. That just means they've got a symptom. That symptom could be a sore throat. That symptom could be a runny nose. That, could, that symptom could be a fever. They have a symptom. Right now, this equals 6,647 people. The great majority of those were able to stay at home. They didn't have to go to hospital. They weren't that sick. They had a flu. They had a cold. 67 people have died. Now, I'm not trying to make light of the deaths of 67 people. It's sad when anybody loses a family member. I know I've lost many. It is sad. So this is not about the sadness or the loss. This is just about the numbers. But of those 67, mostly have died from a pre-existing underlying medical issue. 67 deaths is not a pandemic. 67 deaths, unfortunate deaths, do not necessarily mean to shut a nation down and terrify the living life out of children and take their hope away, destroy their, their emotional systems of hope for the future. This is Australia. Come on, people. Go and, go, and, go and talk to your kids. Ask your kids how they feel about all this stuff. Listen to the children. You'll soon see who the terrorists are. In 2018, 1,180 people died from the seasonal flu. Not 67. 1,180 died from the seasonal flu. There was no lockdown. There was no loss of jobs. There was no panic. There was no arrests. There was no border closures, no travel restrictions, no panic buying, no government wanting to track me on my bloody phone. Like, really? We'll get to that in a minute. No government wanting to force vaccinations on me. We're coming to that because that's coming up on May the 1st. 
uh, a huge experiment that's going to be. No destruction of the economy, no schools closed, no churches closed, no hotels closed. 1,180 and none of this happened. 67 people go down and all of this happens. That means that 1,113 more people died from the flu than this Wuhan virus and the government did nothing, stayed silent. So what is really going on here? What's this all about? Well, I think we need to go and look at uh, perhaps the Bank of International Settlement, the World Bank, and the reserve banks around the world. And I think you're gonna find most of them are in bankruptcy and they're gonna reset the whole financial gizmo so they have to send the countries broke. But that's just me being a tinfoil hat wearer and whatever. A tracking app on your phone. This isn't Big Brother. This is bowing down to your masters. And it's the thin edge of the wedge. You know, a tracking app on your phone. Next minute, they'll want to know how many times you use the toilet. Next minute, they'll want to know, they'll be able to tell. <laughs> they'll just be able to tell when you have sex with your partner. They'll be able to tell exactly where you are, what you're doing, and with whom you're doing it. This is the thin edge of the wedge. The government basically says, we must have control over your movements. The government says, we're all in this together. Well, no, that's probably not exactly right. That's a mem. That makes you feel as if you're doing your part. It's a mem. You are giving them tacit consent. Now, tacit consent, if you refer to someone's tacit agreement or approval, you mean they are agreeing to something or approving it without actually saying so. So your silence is your consent. If you remain silent, then you consent because you didn't say you didn't consent. All for the greater good. It is a mem or a massive propaganda program. And I'll tell you what, Adolf Hitler ran the best propaganda program the world has ever seen. It was the most destructive, but it was brilliant. And I think Morrison and his team are learning fast from the books of Hitler. You see, have we not learnt anything from history? Any government with enough power to demand that you carry papers or a phone in order to move around freely is far more dangerous than COVID-19. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. Ask these poor buggers. They got the tattoo on their arm. You'll carry it in your phone. Tell me the difference. Really, tell me the difference. And you're going to say, oh, Tim, that had never happened here. Let me tell you a quick story. I've got a friend of mine. He's passed away now. But he was a Jewish man in Melbourne. And as a young boy, his uncle came to his father's house one night and said, we have to leave. We have to pack our family up and leave tonight because the SS are going to come through tomorrow and take us all into prison. And this young man's father said, the world would never let that happen. That, that can never happen. <laughs> the young fellow at that stage was, uh, I think he said he was, uh, was 11 and his older brother was 15. The two of them decided to go with his uncle that night. They grabbed a few clothes, shoved them in a bag and they took off. And the father was very angry that they left. Do you know, those two boys never saw their family ever again. Not a trace was left on planet Earth. Don't think for one minute that history cannot, will not ever repeat itself. It's just saying, it's only a history lesson. Voluntary download to your phone. The preference is to go with getting it right, get, do it voluntarily. That's my objective, says Morrison. That's my plan A. Anytime a politician or anybody says, this is my plan A, you've got to understand, they've got plan B, plan C, D, E, F. Oh, and the China flag under his chin is not there by mistake. When you look at what's been sold to the, to the Chinese government, 
through preceding governments and this Turkish government, these guys love the money they get out of China. Whatever you do, rage hard against the tracking app in your damn phone. The Senator Honourable Richard Colbeck, now we're getting on to the vaccination side of it. He says, aged care workers are being urged to get their flu vaccination now ahead of the season in a bid to protect themselves and the senior Australians they care for. Minister for Aged Care Richard Colbeck said that, uh, said while every flu season is serious, the spread of COVID-19 means it's critical every worker is vaccinated. Now let's have a look at that. I, I'm not sure whether Dick's getting a kickback here or not for promoting a product so hard from various manufacturers. Uh, but anyway, you know, could be. So this is what Dick's organisation's on about. Look at this. In October 18, influenza vaccine efficacy and effectiveness and impact was explained. In general, influenza vaccine effectiveness has been found to vary between 30 to 60%. This implies that on average, a vaccinated person is 30 to 60 times 60% less likely to experience the outcome of being the outcome being measured. Now, influenza leading to the attendance of a general practice or hospitalization that an unvaccinated person other than an unvaccinated person, right? Now, that what he's saying there is if you have the flu vaccine, you've got a 30 to 60% chance of it working for you, right? Now, these are my figures. This is mine here in the um, heavy print with the brackets. So this means that they are between 40 and 70% ineffective. The vaccine, the flu vac, by their own government figures, are telling us that they are 40 to 70% ineffective. And yet, if you want to go after the 1st of May, if you want to go and see any of your loved ones in a nursing home, you must have the flu vaccine. If you want to go into the childcare centre to see your little one, take your little one in there, you must have the flu vaccine. If you want to take your children into the school, if you want to go into the schools and pick them up, you must have a flu vaccine or you will be forbidden from doing it. Now, going by these numbers, being 40 to 70% ineffective, I would say these are experimental processes because you just can't, if I was in business and putting out a product that only worked between 40 and 70% of the time, I'd be, I'd be sued criminally for it. These people are experimenting on you. It's just, it is just, and by the way, the vaccine effectiveness is generally lower in older people than younger adults and children. For God's sake, they've said it in their own material. Stuff doesn't work and it's an experiment. Let's have a look at this. The rollout of the May 1st, 2020 flu vaccine deadline by the states and territories of Australia is clearly a medical experimentation. Of course it is. Article 7 of the Australian Human Rights Commission Act of 1986 states, no one will be subject to torture or cruel, inhumane, degrading treatment or punishment. In particular, no one shall be subject without his or her free consent to medical or scientific experimentation. 40 to 70% ineffective, that's an experiment. I don't care what you're measuring. Section 109 of the Constitution of the Australian Commonwealth states that when a law of a state is inconsistent with the law of the Commonwealth, the latter shall prevail and the former shall to the extent of the inconsistency be invalid. The states do not have the lawful right to insist that anybody get a vaccination. Breaches the Constitution, but let's go further. Article 7 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights states no one shall be subject to the torture of cruel, inhumane, degrading treatment or punishment. In particular, again, no one shall be subject without free consent, medical, scientific experimentation. So that's three 
lawful documents that the states are going to be in breach of and the doctors are going to be in breach of. Okay. And they will be liable under their own commercial liability to be sued because you've got the legal documentation to prove they broke these laws. Article 27 of the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties. A party may not invoke the provision of its internal laws as justification for its failure to perform a treaty. Australia is signatory to the above treaties and conventions. Ladies and gentlemen, do not allow yourself to be a part of an experiment that breaches your human rights. As it stands, because the government are not in proper standing, they will, as a corporate bodies, ignore every one of these treaties and laws. Well, hang on, Tim, you just said push, you know, do, yeah, 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 we'll get to that, right? They will take your freedom, your liberty and your rights, and they will virtually enslave you because you let them, again, through tacit agreement. These are the terms you want to look up. The footy's not on, the cricket's not on. You got nothing better to do? Educate yourself. Save your children. Save the bloody nation. The titular Queen of Australia. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the video that's probably going to bite back on me the hardest. And it is going to come in all shapes and forms. And I do this and I, what I said at the beginning and I'll say again at the end, I will not bow to any master. I will not fall down in front of tyranny. Listen to this, please. The Governor General of Australia, David Hurley, is the head of the executive branch of the federal government, serving as the representative of the Australian monarch the Queen of Australia. The Queen of Australia is not the lady with the crown on her head in England. It sounds like her. They call her Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen of Australia. They use that term to make it sound about right for the average Australians. Bob Hawke, through the Australia Act, unlawfully, illegally took the Queen of England out of the Constitution and instill a legal fiction in her place, a piece of paper, a corporation soul, and therefore hijacked the entire nation of Australia. Australian Parliament now operates under the Australia Act, unlawfully and in treason. And if I am wrong, then let me state it right here. I will bow down in front of every politician that I have wronged and beg forgiveness for my wrong. But if I'm right, let's see what happens. Scott Morrison, the Prime Minister of Australia, was sworn in under the Queen of Australia. It is a titular office. Every member of the judiciary, every magistrate, and every judge right up to the High Court are sworn in under the falsity of the Queen of Australia that has nothing to do with our lawful constitution. Sir Harry Gibbs was a High Court judge. He had retired when he wrote a letter to all the other judges. And in that letter, he came to this conclusion. I therefore have to come to the conclusion that the current legal and political system in use in Australia and its states and territories has no basis in law. Therefore, what I'm saying is what Harry Gibbs said is that every law, every statute, all this stuff that's been put out there since 1986 has no authority behind it. It has the appearance of authority. It has the appearance of law, but it's not.
titular, holding or constituting a purely formal position or title without any real authority. In the English language learner's definition of titular, having an important or impressive title, but not having the power or duties that usually go with it. Do you hear what I am saying? Australia, we are being screwed, sold out, run over by people who hold an office with no real authority. Let's have a look at Scott Morrison's in induction into being a prime minister. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Your Excellency, I present the Honourable Scott Morrison to be sworn in to the Office of Prime Minister. Mr Morrison, I invite you to take and subscribe the oath of office as Prime Minister of Australia. I, Scott John Morrison, do swear that I will well and truly serve the people of Australia in the office of Prime Minister and I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Australia, so help me God. And there lies the lie, the treason. This man has just sworn an oath to a foreign entity, not the Queen of England, which our constitution calls the Queen. The, our constitution recognises only one Queen. This is why Harry Gibbs, the High Court judge, says that the law and the, and the parliament has no standing in this country. This man is holding a titular office. And again, I'll state it again. If I am wrong, I will beg forgiveness on my knees. Words have meaning. He was called the Honourable Scott Morrison. And when we have to go to court, we have to say, yes, Your Honour, no, Your Honour. Let's have a look at the word honour. It's a noun high respect, to have great esteem. His portrait hangs in the place of honour as an example. The similar concept of honour is distinction, privilege, glory, tribute, prestige, renown, notability and respect. Now hang on, this man has just sworn an oath to a non-existent watery tart on a piece of paper and taken control of our country and forced you and I and our families into lockdown and to basically declare war on us. The opposite of honour is a disgrace. A person or thing that brings esteem. You are an honour to our profession. The quality of knowing and doing what is morally right. I must, as a matter of honour, avoid any taint of dishonesty. When you write a letter or see anything written about a politician, it is the honourable this and the honourable that. Words have meanings, people. Just like they did for my little granddaughter. The words she heard terrified her and thought she's going to die soon. Those words have meaning in her heart. Words have meanings for us too. Do you think the quality of knowing and doing what is morally right, how many people in parliament have that quality? And I must, as a matter of honour, avoid any taint of dishonesty. How many in parliament can do that. So therefore I say this, 
there is no honour in any parliament, state or federal, in this nation, and we are in great distress. Statutes, codes, rules, regulations are not laws. The general misconception is that the statute passed by legislators bearing the appearance of a law constitutes the law of the land. The Australian Constitution is the supreme law of the land and any statute to be valid must be in agreement. It is impossible for both the Constitution and a law violating it to be valid. One must prevail. The Queen of Australia is in violation to the Constitution. Which one will prevail? It must be the Constitution. Therefore, everybody that's ever sworn an oath under the watery tart of the Queen of Australia has committed an act of treason against you, your family, and our common wealth. They've sold our minerals, they've sold our lands, they've sold our infrastructure to our enemy. This is succinctly stated as follows. The general rule is that an unconstitutional statute through having the form and name of law is in reality no law, but is wholly void and ineffective for any purpose since unconstitutionality dates from the time of its enactment and not merely from the date of the decision so branding it. An unconstitutional law in legal contemplation is inoperative as if it had never been passed. Oh, really? And we stay locked in our house for what reason? Has the Australian Government Corporation declared war on the people of Australia? Based on their actions, it would seem so. What say you? I know you're scared. I, I know you're scared. I know you sit there and you think, well, what if the police do this? What if the police do that? That's exactly what they want you to think. That's how they want you to feel. How do you think those poor bastards at Gallipoli felt? Do you think they were scared? In the, you know, at um, Ville Breton Air in France, in the Fromme. Do you think they were scared? They were being shot to hell. Do you think they stayed at home and cried for mummy? Some of them probably did cry. I know I would have, facing that sort of terror. But they stood up and they ran towards the guns. We're a week away from Anzac Day. What about the Vietnam vets? walking through the jungle, being ambushed every bloody step they took. Do you think they were scared? Of course they were. What do you think they did? They did what they had to do. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to do what you have to do. To all that are listed below, you are now on public notice titular office holders. Every office holder in every federal and state parliament is holding office with no authority. Every state premier, every mayor of every council, every police officer, every magistrate, every judge, every Australian federal police officer, and every member of the ADF, the Australian Defence Force. I am asking you firstly please do what is right you know particularly the high-ranking officers you know what's right the high court judges high court judges you know what is right and yet and still you sit silent your honours, I ask you to fulfil the term, your honour. Every magistrate, it is time for you to come out of working in the corporation courts. 
please. Every police officer, I know you've been told that we the people are your enemy and you've got to keep us under control, but understand something. Taking orders is no excuse. Politicians, I know you're there for the money, you're 30 pieces of silver, won't help. The Nuremberg trials happened a long time ago. They could happen again, except it wouldn't be called the Nuremberg trials. They'll be called the Australia trials. And following orders was no excuse. Look it up. And as the people stand up against the terror that this man's government and the media have set upon you, they will use the term domestic terrorists against all who stand up for their rights and freedoms. I am not a domestic terrorist. I'm a man who loves his country and loves his family. And yes, the years are slipping by. And as the old poem said at school, we are the pioneers, but ours were the hearts to dare. But our youth is spent and our backs are bent and the snow is in our hair but we will still stand up. Here's your terrorist organization. Here are the people that terrorize you and your family that make statements that are not true. These people here, the, all these news agents and news, uh, news media people, the television, everything else, they're the ones who've scared the crap out of you. They're the ones that have terrorized your kids. They're the ones that have interrupted the education for 67 deaths. Not 670, not 6,000, not 6 million for 67 deaths in Australia, and they call it a pandemic. They want to put tracking on your phone. They restrict your border movement. They restrict your capacity to earn. These people have created the terror. Upper and lower houses of parliament and the media. And every state parliament the same. I want to play this. This is the 2015 Anzac Day football match. This is the ceremony or part thereof prior to it. I want to play this and I want you to listen. And I want you to see all those people in the stands, 80 odd thousand of them, shoulder to shoulder. Please pay attention to the Anzac observance. We welcome today the President of the Victorian Returned and Services League, Vietnam veteran, Major General David McLaughlin. For our departed comrades, they shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemned. The going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Counterpoint party, I out! Out! Counterpoint party, freeze, out! Out! <laughs> Thank you. 
Kind of bomb party eyes. Are we playing the last post for the setting of the sun on our freedom? The freedom of our children, the freedom of our grandkids. Will we ever stand shoulder to shoulder like this football field has for a game of football? Will we ever stand this way for our freedoms, our, our rights to step out from under a titular government and have a legitimate government that cares about the people? And will we ever bring the media under control? Ladies and gentlemen, when I put this video up, my life will change forever. I'm bloody sure of it. But I'll do it simply because it's not because I'm not scared. It's because I've got to the point of being scared that I must. I will never bow to any tyrant nor stay silent in times of oppression. I love this country. And only in death will I be seen to bow and then fall silent. God help us. Thank you.